Hey everybody, it's Sunday, July 13th, 2014. Hope you guys are having a great day. And today we're going to talk about customer service with Patrick Spears over at Robin HQ. And I'm not sure if I pronounced his last name right, so sorry, Patrick, <laughs> if you're listening. But before we start, uh, I did a site teardown of my e-commerce store the other day with Brendan Tully, who was on uh, really early on in the podcast on episode 22. Uh, he's got a new site now called Pareto e-commerce, where it's basically a action product to help store owners optimize your stores. So the process is you go through is a lot of quick wins, uh, on-site stuff, and then on to kind of some paid marketing things that you can do. And it's basically the framework he uses for his consulting business, uh, Search Engine Shop, over in Australia. And I'll be posting a video of that. We actually did a screen flow, screen recording of the whole video review along with the audio. Uh, just because I think if you have the audio and then I changed my site, there's no contact. So there's a video there uh, to kind of help you guys out. So stay tuned for that and I'll catch you guys next time. Don't deliver a product, deliver an experience. You're listening to the Build My Online Store podcast, and I'm your host, Terry Lynn. We're here to talk about running an online store and building a strong e-commerce brand to take your online store to the next level. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to check us out at buildmyonlinestore.com. Let's get on with the show. So uh, who are you and what do you do? I'm Patrick, as you mentioned, and I'm the founder of Robin. And, and Robin is uh, the customer service app specifically designed for uh, for online stores. Gotcha. And so um, how is Robin different than, say, uh, something like a competitor like Zendesk or a ticketing system? That's kind of what's kind of more known as that. They're all based on the ticketing principle. When, when we started designing Robin a couple of years ago, in 2011, we took the, the, the conversation as a central point. We never use the word ticket in our platform. We, uh, we don't work with numbers. Uh, we try to keep it really easy. And everybody says we're doing it easy because everybody wants an easy tool. But what differs us is that we never work with business rules, so you don't have to define anything like that. We use machine learning algorithms that makes it really easy to do it automatically. We learn from every incoming question, for example, look for the right employee based on what everybody responded before. So for example, instead of like ticketing systems where people are assigned like a case number, uh, are customers assigned by their names and emails in a more personal level or how does that work uh, on the back? We end? see a question that comes in is from a customer, right? So it's, it's not a number. So And you open that up and we directly present all the relevant information in there. So say like I go on a store that's using Robin, right? I'm like, hey, do your blue shoes have free shipping? Um, so like how would they keep track of this conversation if I have like five different staff people running like the live chat or like anything Technically, else? Technically... A conversation is, is the same, but the way you, you treat it in your user interface is different. Let's say that when a question comes in, uh, normally in a ticketing system it comes in a queue and it gets a number and then you, you, get, a re you get a reply that your, your request is being reviewed. Um, what we do is we directly check who is the best person to, to, uh, to respond to this question. We directly put it in the personal inbox of that specific employee and we notify them based on uh, how they want to be notified. You're kind of saying that like instead of most ticketing systems where you have to work in that system the way it's designed, uh, Robin is much more personable and kind of flexible based on your team's arrangements and yeah. kind of how people want to work and being more personal to the customer. Yeah, and we don't see it as a, as a ticket, as a, as a big case. We just see it as small, really small, um, more chat-like conversation messages. So try to keep it short, not write a whole email templating in the UI, et cetera. We don't do that. We just keep the messages short. When a customer replies through email, we filter the whole email out of it and only show the new message automatically. We, we don't say reply above this line or whatever, whatsoever. We just eliminate that out of it to make it a real yeah, neat experience for the online shopper, but also for the people who work with It's because when you see that as a customer, it feels very mechanical. Like you get all that reply above this line or do not reply at whatever. It's just like, like then why send me this email then? Yeah, it's, it's and we try to eliminate that to, to get a clean experience. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So, so how did you get started with Robin in the first place? I love online shopping. So uh, when the first online shops came up, um, uh, I started ordering online. The first orders I placed in uh, at, at bigger companies and then the smaller companies came up and then you try to look for some really uh, unique stuff and, and you end up with smaller online retailers 
and then you try to contact them and it was all kind of difficult. From my working experience before Robin, I knew that the bigger online retailers integrated their systems and when an email comes in, they could see the con conversation history and they could see uh, there, there were quick links to order systems, etc. Um, so I thought when, when I contacted those smaller retailers, I, I directly felt that they all had all kinds of tools, all different tools, and they had difficulties to find uh, to find the relevant information to keep track of the conversation. We need to, to make something that's really easy for them. Um, and, and, and then I, when I decided that, I started talking to, to smaller online retailers and, and hear what their, what their wishes are. And, and then I discovered that when they look for that kind of uh, solutions, they get overwhelmed by all the things you have to do in the setup process. So they, you mentioned Zendesk before, and Zendesk is a beautiful solution, so I don't want to say uh, negative things about it, but it's a, it's a complex system. You, you can do a lot with it. All these configuration options means that you have to make choices. Yeah, especially as someone just running your store yourself, or maybe with like two people, like you look at the enterprise solutions out there, even like Zendesk, just to get it set up, isn't that, it's not like a plug and play solution. You still got to define all these things and where things go. And like, like, there's a lot, like you said, there's a lot you can do, but I think for most people starting out, like you're like, whoa, like where do I even? When you start, you just want to have a real easy thing. Like it's just like, I want to start with analytics. You paste your JavaScript for Google Analytics and you, you just start looking. And it's the same with Robin. You paste your JavaScript, the contact tab will be there, you open it up and you get the first conversations from customers coming in. And it's, it's, it's a real, real easy experience by you can start responding very fast and it learns from every interaction you have with the customer. For example, the knowledge base. So we say, yeah, we, we don't have a knowledge base. What we do is we, we remember all the previous given answers and build automatically a library of reusable answers. You don't have to do anything for that. You don't have to build a separate knowledge base. It really falls upon like the store owners now because I think customers expect a level of customer service across the board now, whereas like maybe a big guy that has a lot of resources can afford to do that well, but even a little guy, even though he doesn't, he still has to give that level just because the customer expects it now too, right? Well, especially the little guy, huh? You know, because their brand is not so big as Zappos or whatever. And that's where you can make the difference because, yeah, Zappos is a big company that, that lives customer service, but there are also a lot of big competitors in the market that just do customer service. Yeah, gotcha. So let's go into customer service a little bit more. So uh, what are some kind of lousy service examples you've experienced before you started Robin? Because I understand, you know, a lot of this inspiration for Robin came from your own experience. So what's maybe like uh, one or three examples that you had that really frustrated you as a customer? And maybe something that store owners can take into mind uh, as they're designing their own customer service. Specific examples, you know, I like shoes. So the difficulties with shoes are always, uh, how is the size exactly? You know, some some brands I need 42, some brands I need 41 because I'm just a little bit in between. You you just want to talk with, with a web store, right? You just want to ask before you order because I'm not the person who orders two pairs, like a 41 and a 42, and return one. And the web store doesn't want returns, right? It's, it's one of the big problems. When you try to, uh, to contact them and you have to search where's the email address or where's the web form or where's the live chat button. And, and, and you start looking and you move out of your funnel, you start looking for the contact button and then you find an email address and you send that email and then you receive another reply back that says, we will reply to you in 24 hours, but I, am a, I, I always like it fast, right? So, <laughs> uh, and I think most customers like it fast. And then at that point, you, you think, well, is there maybe another store that also has these sneakers, for example? And that was what I experienced. And I thought, well, why is this? Or you just go to YouTube after that since you're distracted or you watch some cat videos. Or yeah, for example. Or something on yeah. Facebook comes in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, interesting. So I guess it's little things like that that remove the friction that really make the experience better too, right? Yeah, because I had a lot of experience in online customer service in the enterprise world, you see that all the, the problems that those 
bigger companies uh, are experiencing are also applicable for the smaller online retailers. That are things like, I'm giving you a call because I sent you an email. Oh, yeah, the emails are, are done by my colleague because the, the Outlook is on, on his computer. She replies to my question by phone. And, and a day later, I receive a reply to the email, you know, and, and I think, wow, that, that's a waste of time, you, you know, especially for small teams that run online stores. Time is, is the most limited resource there is. See, yeah, that, that's really frustrating, though, when you have, like, an email chain going on, a, a ticket number, and then you call them and they have no idea what's going on. It's just like a huge waste of time. Awesome. So we got two examples. One is kind of, you know, contacting people. Uh, the ease of that, removing the friction. The second is kind of, you know, once you have a conversation going, how does everyone on the team keep track? How do you stay in touch with the customer? And what's the third one that you found that, that was really frustrating too, besides these two? You know, I, I, want, I want relevant stuff, you know, I want relevant answers. So what was frustrating for me is, is for example, I send in an email and why do they ask my, my order number? They ask me like, hey, can I have your order number? And I think, well, you should already could see the order history of me because the, it's done by the same email address, right? Then you feel that they work in different IT systems. And because I know, I have a background in it, I know that it's in different systems. But most online shoppers don't have a, a technical background. So they think, huh? All right, this is my order number. And then it's so easy to, to connect those two data sources together so you could give another experience, right? Yeah, and, and I guess this brings you another question. Why do you think most ticketing systems don't have this integrated? Is it because they think of themselves as strictly a ticketing system so they don't bother to enhance the experience? Or like, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if you develop software and, and you do that for, let's say, the internet at large, so for all kind of customers, you have to build maybe a hundred different type of integrations to all kind of systems. We, we are specifically designed for web stores. So for us, it's, we, we choose it as a strategy to work together with the bigger shop platforms like Shopify and BigCommerce and Magento. They, they want easy integrations with, with, with low budget tools. We try to find a way to, uh, to create something for them. Do you find it hard for store owners to get on board? Because I think when you have like a Shopify store, there's all these apps you can buy. Yeah. And you know, yeah. they're like $9 a month, $10 a month, $30 a month. Like, do you find that hard to get into the customer's mind for you guys? Yeah, it is. Because um, for example, the Shopify app store has maybe 500 apps in it. So how do you find the right ones? That's something uh, to find a way for. You know, I talk a lot with other apps in the app store and you see that they have the same the same challenges in that uh, in that space. In the Shopify App Store, reviews are very important. So um, you have to make sure that um, you bring great experience to the web store owners and, and uh, work together with them to, to help them really with their needs and ask them for a review. As a store, a lot of people think, well, I could spend this money on email marketing or analytics or something like that because you know everyone tells me i have to do something and like it's just like where do i put myself obviously i can't buy every app out there yeah everyone... i do really uh, understand that when you when you're just starting your business you just think you have to put all your money in marketing right get new customers that's a logical thought it's it's important to to get the best roi on that marketing spend and and so if you uh if, if you keep the back door open, which I uh, see as, as if you don't do customer service in a good way, then you will discover that you uh, have a, a big percentage of disloyal customers. Yeah, and really because word of mouth is the cheapest way to acquire new customers too, right? If someone tells their friend it's better than spending $10 on AdWords on them. I mean, you could, but you get better margins that way too. And I think over the, over time, this is what really scales up also. Yeah, it's important to grow. But, but the most important thing is that the biggest value of customer service is to make sure that people are not getting disloyal, that you can... Uh, sell again to a customer who bought for the first time. Yeah. So how would you compare, say, really wanting the customer versus, say, just making the shopping on the store really easy? Like we were talking about contact information. Like these things are actually really, really simple, right? But would you say that's the majority of what makes a good experience? Or is it actually one of those crazy stories like, you know, a handwritten note plus, 
you know, flowers or a free pizza like what Zappos does. <laughs> you know, I, I like all those experiences. So I love it when uh, when I order something online and there is a small handwritten note in it. Let's say when when one of the, the things I ordered is not okay and I just want to contact them and, and it's, it's difficult to get get in touch with them, then this whole handwritten thing is nothing. It only helps when, when you have all the basics working. Respond fast, that's something that's really important. Respond with a relevant answer, also important. If, if you don't do, uh, do those things, then a nice box or a handwritten note or uh, whatever you can think of, a free goodie or whatever, it doesn't work, you know, because um, it's, it's about an easy solution for, for problems when you have that organized in a good way, then you can start thinking of, well, the handwritten note. Gotcha. So if we think about this like a pyramid, your base would be that having the structure set up, you know, easy, frictionless contact, uh, you know, good customer service response. And then you have the kind of more high touch wow things on the top. Otherwise, yeah. Yeah, if you just have that, there's yeah, no and I, and I And I also can understand that, you know, once you grow, you get you are successful, and you, and your business is growing, and and then your incoming questions are also growing, you know. And then maybe you don't want to have a big contact button on each page because you have difficulties in responding to all questions. That's when also wowing gets to the background, and you have to organize all incoming questions in the first place, right? All right, cool. So I guess uh, one question is: uh, Is there a certain sales number for a store to make sense to use Robin or does anyone starting out like today day one they should get on board too uh, kind of on a realistic level well on a realistic level you mentioned before that uh, all stores or store owners have to make choices in where to put their money right so we are not we are not a free app so we start at five dollars a month but I should say when you start a web store and you are serious with it so you have ambitions uh, you don't do it for a hobby like, well, well, if I get two orders this month, it's nice. So if you're really serious, then I should advise to, uh, to organize also your customer service in a, in, a, in a proper way. If it is with Robin or with another tool or, or even with Gmail or whatever, but think about it, you know, organize it in a great way. What, what I often, often see is that people who just start with a web store, they have one email address, but they use it to communicate with their friends, their family to subscribe to newsletters, to talk with suppliers, and also to talk with customers. And then after a couple of months, um, they think, well, this is not, this is not very, very easy to manage. So they have to tell or to tell all their suppliers that their email address changed or to certain customers that don't email me anymore on, on info app, but just use customer service app now. And, um, so what I advise is to, to always to set up a separate email address for your customer communication and make sure that that email address is also the sender of your automatic emails like order confirmations or uh, that kind of uh, automatic, automated emails. And that's that's a tip for starters um, to, do, to, do, to do that at least. So are you saying like instead of having info at blueshoes.com, I shouldn't have like orders at Blue Shoes, payments, I should just have one kind of unified email or? Yes, I do think so because um, you have separate email addresses to, to organize the things internally and you just bother the customer with your internal processes if you communicate all different email addresses. So I should say uh, the customer is always the most important thing in this and, and for them, yeah, they just want a, an answer to their reply. That's why we also made that algorithm that recognizes where the question is about and who in the organization is the best person to, uh, to respond to that one. And, and that's why you don't need the different email addresses because if you do all the administration questions, then if you have done 10 of those questions, we will recognize it automatically and we say, well, send them to Terry directly and not to Patrick. Gotcha. Yeah, because as a customer, I really don't want to deal with like six different email addresses. No, and, you don't understand it. people CC'd and yeah, exactly. I should say, uh, try to keep that as clean as possible. And, and uh, for the starting web stores, yeah, inter the interaction with your customer is very important because they tell you what you didn't see yourself, where your store is not good enough. For example, you, maybe your photos are 
not big enough or the details in the in, in, in your photos is, is not is not good enough. And then when people start asking questions about that, then you directly know. So there, there is a lot of feedback in those customer service questions that can help you to optimize the user experience. And you, sh- and you should do that. Yeah, gotcha. Very well said. All right, well, thanks for coming on the show, Patrick. Uh, listeners, thanks for joining us. If you guys want to find out more about this awesome guide they're going to publish soon and more about having a great customer service tool, go to robinhq.com. And Patrick, thanks again for joining us, and we'll keep in touch. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Build My Online Store podcast. If you want the show notes, make sure to check out the website at buildmyonlinestore.com. If you've got an e-commerce store, every two weeks I lead a live mastermind call with about five or six of the listeners in two separate groups where we work openly together and solve a business problem that you have. And we're all there to support each other. So if this sounds like your cup of tea, make sure to check us out at buildmyonlinestore.com slash mastermind. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll catch up with you guys next week.